Greetings. <laughs> Hi. You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. I'm here with Kotobuki Jake. And we are here to talk. Yes. A talk. A talk. <laughs> but uh, this is going to be a one in a new series. Yes. We had been combining this with the pickups. Mm -hmm. But because of video length, we're going to try and mm -hmm. shorten the length per video. Mm -hmm. And the video, you know, the pickups were getting to be 45 minutes, almost an hour long sometimes. I think we got them down. We got them down hour, to like, we got them down to like yeah. 35 to 40 minutes, right. which still. But uh, sometimes we want to have some bells and whistles on our new section and this will make it easier to do that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, that way we're also not running and trying to go, okay, gotta get, gotta get to the pickups, gotta get to pickups. Yeah. Uh, we can talk a little bit about news mm -hmm. things now. I also at the beginning of this talk about news for the channel, mm -hmm. which um, a couple things that's going to happen. I do. Ch I am changing up the way I'm reviewing things. Um, I do plan on doing a review soon for those of you who do watch the reviews, and apparently there are those of you who do. Matter of fact, a lot of you <laughs> who watch our channel watch the reviews, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to tailor this to what you guys want. Which means I'm trying to find some lesser watch cinema to honor. I'm actually going back to the X Strike Well, and I'm going to try and do a series of their films. Under this new type of uh, feature for my reviews, I'm not so much reviewing the movie itself, but the release. I know this is just an example because I've got the movie I'm reviewing elsewhere. Which means uh, I also will go through, try and look at the commentaries, try and look at the special features, and then give you not just a review of the movie, but of the features on the disc. So short films, music videos, hmm. the commentaries, of course, give me more insight as to what they're thinking, hmm. which I, I definitely when I was doing my review of Camp Blood, mm -hmm. I could have used those insights because knowing certain things, like uh, the long, long um, review of the last movies that was in there, that was actually not really by design. It was something that kind of they had to do in order to get the runtime out. So I can understand where it goes. It gives me a greater appreciation of the films that I'm watching. And... Um, mm -hmm. And in general, uh, I've never bothered with commentaries in the past, so it'll be interesting. It'll be a full analysis. Uh, so look forward to that sometime mm -hmm. in the future. I'm also I've also got a room tour already uploaded to Facebook, my mm -hmm. Facebook, um, to YouTube. And you can that, have a link for it on Facebook. It might be good. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. it will come up on Facebook, but it's not going to be released until Friday. Now. Um, so many of you have been looking for a room tour. You get to see this lovely room in its entirety, and it gives you an example as to where it is in the house. This is theoretically, I'm not showing you where I live, but giving you an idea. <laughs> now, other than that, uh, we do have a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday, we're doing a uh, our own little vlog. Uh, this topic is going to be three films in our collection that we're not too amused with but have to keep them anyway for various reasons it's so a polite way to put it it's it's a uh it's just something that's just going to be some fun we're going to keep it not super long that's why we picked three each but mm -hmm. we're just going to have some fun with it and mm -hmm. uh get away from a lot of this serious mm -hmm. analysis and discussion right of course <laughs> analysis and discussion can be a lot of fun and you know you're talking. We we have often had this little commentary about the commentary, especially when it comes to shows like, for example, Criterion releases, yeah. because that's the whole point of a collector's edition release, is to have stuff that the collectors want. Yeah. And for me, I love swag, <laughs> but I don't like swag that is useless in the box because it's just there i like on disc bonus features because you can easily access them without worrying about wear and tear and, but also it's fun to have that sort of insight as you said i went through a phase where i did a lot of commentaries and in fact one of the one of the first 
Criterion Collection editions that I put in my collection was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And I watched everything that came with that one. But due to time issues, I seldom do that. Yeah. But it would be nice to do it regularly. And um, we'll be... Uh, another thing as far as the channel goes, mm -hmm. I have... I, I think I mentioned in a previous one that I had filmed a couple videos, but I wasn't happy with them. To put it bluntly, the first one I filmed was 21 minutes long. Mm -hmm. I want it shorter than that. So, but I like having natural lighting which extremely limits what when I can do stuff. Yep. So tomorrow morning I'm going to make an attempt to redo the first two. <laughs> I have a third one. And my first, I'm going to do occasional things. I'm not going to go as into it as he is, and, and you know, partly because he does so many reviews already. But mm -hmm. he's been wanting me to do some solo stuff. So I have a movie. The movie and the anime are the first two reviews I have a manga review ready to, to turn in. Um, so they should be interesting. Hopefully you'll enjoy them. I'm kind of not so much focusing on the lesser knowns as what really grabs me. Like, I feel like I want to talk about this one. <laughs> so hopefully that'll be a good way to do it. We'll see. Um, I'm not definitely not doing them for everything. Yeah, but well, um, Neither am I anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But anyway, uh, so I guess that's it for channel stuff. For yeah, I think so. So, so uh, I guess we'll uh, go with, um, well, what we've been uh, watching this week. And okay. then uh, after that, we'll hit some stuff that's been in the news okay. and any sales or uh, movie <laughs> and and uh, release mm -hmm. news. And then uh, that'll be it. Uh, so I guess, uh, so what have you been watching this week? Oh, well, pretty pretty decent amount. In our pickup video, I mentioned that I've been watching some Frozen Planet. I have three Wait. episodes down of, I think, seven. <gasps> a penguin? And he's been drinking. Wait a minute. Penguins can't fly. Penguins can't fly! Um, so that... Uh, I've also gotten in three or four additional episodes, uh, I think four additional episodes of Boardwalk Empire, another one where I have limited time available for watching, but I am very much enjoying. A um, little bit more Friends, not much. Um, and then with the uh, with the anime, I think last time, I'm losing track because it's been a minute. <laughs> I feel like uh, I had just started Dora? was that right yeah you were talking yeah. about Dora. i just started i have completed my rewatch of the first series and i have to say it is a really good series it, it was very much worth being added to my collection um and if and this would be a really good part for a sound bite mm -hmm. you can find I'm hoping you're able to find a clip of Shizuo yelling at Izaya. <laughs> well, well, we'll really, see. Mm -hmm. That would be really appropriate for that series. Izaya-kun. Izaya-kun yo. But it's a really good one, and there may be a review coming because I feel like that's one I want to talk about. Um, it's one that you cannot get unless you're willing to pay a lot of money. But you, Aniplex streams on several platforms, so you should be able to stream it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then movies, you know, I've been watching... I can't remember due to last week. I think... I had... I think we did... Uh, yeah, I had been to the Oscar ones, I think. So I'd already commented on Shape of Water, right? And yeah. the... Um, and all of the other ones, which was a really good movie. Um, Oscars kind of exhaust you when it comes to film. Yeah, watching. I know. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. I am enjoying this scene. Get on with it. I've seen a few since then from the library. Um, what was the uh, the one the other day? It was um, Atomic Blonde. I finally <laughs> knocked out. It was pretty good. Nothing extraordinary. Yeah. Um, you can you can launch into it while trying to remember what other ones I saw. Well, I mean, I didn't see a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I've mostly been concentrating on getting through Pat Labor, mm. which is a sizable series. I think I've watched 40 episodes so far, and I've still got about one to two volumes left. And then I have the OVAs. Hmm. I've already watched the first two movies. The third one I can't remember because it's WX something or something, and so it's all the way out to W. Um, mm. But uh, I've been enjoying it, sort of. It's a, it's a nice little series. Mm -hmm. um, I want to watch Bacchano next. Pretty high which, pro those are both pretty high-profile uh, series. I'm trying to hit high-profile. Yeah. Um, I need to see Bacchano. Other than that, I've been concentrating on trying to watch River City Rumble, I think is the uh, name of the movie. Watch me butcher it. Um, but, uh, by X Strike, which is going to be my next review. Mm -hmm. So I've watched it essentially three times. Uh, the third time, so there's the first one. Then there is the time with the main group talking about it and their commentary. Mm -hmm. Then the third one is by the uh, gang, the zombies. And they're like, boy, you must really like this film. Not only have you watched it twice already. Once with no sound, <laughs> but now you're watching it a third time with us. And they apparently spent most of the time playing another game while they were going through this movie. <laughs> but I got little tidbits of insight throughout. <laughs> there were a couple things I was hoping would be covered that haven't been, and I'm still, I've still got a couple of shorts I've watched the making of. Hmm. Uh, but once I've gotten the shorts done, I will be ready to review. Um, other than that, I tried to watch Thor. Um, I've actually got Thor and Justice League. Uh, I haven't even opened Justice League. Thor, I watched the first couple minutes of it, and I just <sighs> fell asleep. Uh, I woke up, like, uh, three-fourths of the way through the movie, uh, stopped it and said, okay, we've got to, um... Uh, I go again. I, I actually I, <laughs> I, I lost consciousness around the time where they had this play that that they were doing for, uh, um, well, for Thor's father, um, where he was putting it on. Oh, Thor's father. Yeah, yeah. I watched the last movie. I know what it was about, but I'm not trying to ruin things for people. Um, so that's pretty much been a lot oh, of my watching. Oh, you mean well, like we were doing some spoilers? Some... Exactly. Spoiler. But uh, that's pretty much been my watch. As okay. I'll admit, I mean, I've been playing some Secret of Mana remake. Mm -hmm. I want to get through that. Mm -hmm. um, because I am because I don't really get down here to the media room, mm -hmm. but maybe once or twice a week, um, that's the only time I really uh, try to watch Secret of Mana. My TV's kind of dying on me, mm -hmm. so it's losing the ability to broadcast. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Hopefully it'll last a little bit longer so I can save up the money to get a new TV. Hmm. And um, so let's see. Uh, oh. And uh, so I've been playing some mostly Fallout when I'm uh, kind of zoned out upstairs. Um, oh, and I did get to see two episodes of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. And that's been released now once a week. It's hmm. a bit jarring for those of us who have been keeping up with it. Because up until then, they basically aired... All of that season's episodes in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And just <laughs> dumped it. And then it's gone for three months. And then two weeks. And yes. then it's gone Disney. until... Yeah. So now they're doing it like a real show. They're doing it once a week. <laughs> like a real show. And uh, which is good and it's bad. Because I really enjoy the show. And uh, 
I want more. I remembered a big one. Uh, I finally got to watch one of the movies that I really wanted to see that I thought was going to be in the Oscar mm -hmm. discussion and wasn't. And I'm a little surprised that it wasn't. Uh, but I did finally get to see Battle of the Sexes, and it was oh. a very enjoyable movie. What time? Has, it has some weird moments. The whole uh, relationship between uh, Billie Jean King and um, her hairdresser hmm. is uh, Emma Stone and Andrea Rasbro. The way they played it tonally didn't fit the rest of the movie. I thought... You know, there were parts where you were taken out of the movie because the tone was so different. But otherwise, it was a pretty good movie. And Emma Stone and Steve Carell did a... They both did great jobs. Mm -hmm. They really did. And the music was great, too. So it was, it was a good... It was a lot of fun. Um, that was really the only other major one. I watched a special called Creatures of Light about bioluminescence that was pretty interesting oh, that is cool um yeah they could have deep water ones yeah and, those and that was a really big neat. part of it yeah but um <clears throat> so yeah it was it was a very uh yeah i know there were some others i saw on along the way but it, it's like my time has been i've been pulled every which way and one of the things which was really big was saturday our library system did a comic-con oh. and that's always a lot of fun and I basically worked the uh, button making station. I wish I'd thought to bring the buttons you got to, to show read a off lot of, um, uh, stuff too. You, said you got to catch up on a lot of stuff. Yeah, a fair bit of reading. We uh, the thing with our system is we we have a good budget, but it's not extraordinary, mm -hmm. and they don't put as much into graphic novels and manga as I would like. Yeah. But they do more than I would have expected when I first started working there. And for Comic-Con, they put most of the year's budget into, they have like tons of new stuff there to check out. And already in the past couple of days, I've read the most recent issues, for me, the next recent issue, let's put it that way, for Blue Exorcist, My Hero oh, right. Academia, and Nisekoi. Yeah, you're and, me on those series. Mm -hmm. And I've also... Um, <clears throat> picked up the newest volume of uh, A Bride's Story and some of the others that I'm going to be able to continue forward on, including Nisekoi uh, and My Hero Academia. There's additional volumes for them. But I'll be able to continue forward uh, finally on Skip Beat and Black Butler. So definitely I'm excited about that. We got a whole bunch <laughs> of the new X-Men stuff, which they're very hit or miss on X-Men. But the new Blue and Gold series, we got the first three volumes of each, so I'm looking forward to that. New volume of Squid Girl, a new volume mm. of Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, new, you know, a lot of the series I'm wanting to read um, all kind of happen at once. So I've got a lot of that to look forward to in the next couple of months. And big thing in that note, and this is what my, I, I don't want to, I guess I'll go ahead and give it away. My manga review is going to be on Fairy Tale. All right. I finally finished Fairy Tale. I haven't watched. I haven't even read the first sixty-three volume. <laughs> volumes. It is the longest series I've completed by far. I think Negima was the one before that, and that's like thirty-six, thirty-eight, something like that. Um, <clears throat> Skip Beat is longer than Negima, but it's not finished yet. And I've right. I've read thirty-seven right now. Um, he beat me so, on the longest. <clears throat> so Fairy Tale, I'm definitely excited to have finally finished. And I picked up a new Shonen one. Hmm. I may be insane. <laughs> I finally dodged. I finally bit the bullet. I've read the first two volumes of One Piece. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to keep me busy for a while. <laughs> actually, I've probably read... From what I've read up in One Piece, it might actually be beyond what fairy tale was because i didn't mm. i had it up to fairly recent up to a year ago and With one piece yep up wow to a year you must ago. have been like the five or six or no it's sort of like 40 or 50 i guess maybe? but i was reading it online as it was coming oh out. okay so it's hard to keep track of what yeah. volume on when you do it online but previously the only mm. ones i've read in print the longest one yeah. is uh, inuyasha which is nowhere near that long how long is that one that's 56 volumes. 56 i'm okay. looking back here because that's where it is yeah um, I need to read Inuyasha. Speaking of reading, <laughs> I have been working on rereading Skip Beat because I, 
I stopped reading Skip Beat probably in the uh, 20s, 30s. I can't remember what where it is because I can only remember somewhat in the storyline. I think you said you'd gotten almost as far as I have. Um. Yeah, it was it was after the Beagles, and uh, it was uh, it, like I say, my memory is just uh, mm. right now when it comes to it. But I'll remi- remember when I've gotten to that part again, mm-hmm. and I will be beyond because I was reading it online. So, mm-hmm. as it was coming out for a while, but I have a harder time reading them on the computer because yeah. they hurt my eyes. Um, I also, I forgot something I did watch. And this will segue into some news items. Mm-hmm. And some of what you talked to segues into some news items. Well, if you're about to segue, let me just go ahead and throw out one more. I could have segued into this and I forgot. In honor of finishing Fairy Tale, I decided to put Fairy Tale on the block next for my Blu-ray. So I've already started oh, right. watching Volume Five. I have Five and Six I picked up for me. Christmas. <laughs> so Volume Five covers the Tenro Island arc, and it's actually fairly amazing that it syncs up almost perfectly with that set. Hmm. So I'm well into the Tenro Island arc at this okay, point. So but, yeah. at least I'm I'm still farther in the anime than you apparently. Well, I have watched. Well into season two, but in my personal collection, that's oh, how yeah. far I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, my personal collection, I'm farther than you've gotten. <laughs> um, now, I have watched uh, three films mm-hmm. and a documentary on the three films uh, for the uh, old movie, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Hmm. Now, there is a method to my madness, because normally I would hold this to Halloween. Hmm. But... Movies galore. This previous Tuesday, which when we're recording this is on Monday, so it's going to be tomorrow for us. <laughs> yesterday for you. And uh, isn't time inside, travel a funny thing? It is. <laughs> but inside movies galore is doing a discussion of the first film. Hmm. And after watching the first film, it was much better than I than I had thought it was going to be. Hmm. Uh, a little bit deeper than I would have expected with overtones of um of just in general putting yourself into the creature's shoes looking at the interactions there's a scene where the creature is uh swimming with the uh with the lead female and you can see sort of a gentle like uh innocence and uh curiosity and uh to me that's that is there uh, is it wrong that this whole time I've been thinking about the shape of water yeah, well, that is an appropriate uh, that is an appropriate thing if you think about it. Um, of course, the woman in none of these movies really falls for the creature. Um, the creature <laughs> falls for the woman, but I almost feel like it's a subtle expression of racism because you've got the other going after the white woman. <laughs> and what do they have to do when they do that? They shoot them. But. Then again... Nothing we can do here. God put them down. <laughs> but uh, they are interesting movies. I mean, the first one is they go to this lagoon because they find these fossils, and then they find that there's a living version of this creature, which is part man, part mm. fish, and many of them die. <laughs> mm. There's a lot of death in these movies. Mm. Um, not gory death, but death, nevertheless. Mm. Then the second one, they go back and they capture a creature, the creature... And decide they're going to make it an amusement park attraction. That doesn't work so well. And then the third one, the third one just gets strange. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> if you get a chance, pick it up. Uh, you can get three films on a set, usually around 10 15 bucks. And if you're interested in the analysis... Go check out Inside Movies Galore. I will try and get the link to the main channel if I can remember to, which I'll be listening to this video as I'm doing the editing, so I should hope to put it in here. <laughs> and um, then uh, you'll find out yourself. And on another segue from what you're saying into the news, <laughs> um, one of the things that you were talking about, which is My Hero Academ- Academia, My Hero. Yes. Early next month, we get to see the next season. Season 3 is finally coming out. Very cool. And as I have not had the time, I barely have the time to keep up with Skip Beat, which I'm not really. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to read that manga. 
Hmm. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. It comes out pretty quickly on Hulu. So I'm actually manga. quite excited about mm-hmm. that because I haven't gotten to read anything mm-hmm. since uh, they've done the whole like um, uh, the whole storyline where they do mm-hmm. the mentoring and they uh, mm-hmm. and uh, they each kind of go their own ways mm-hmm. after defeating the um, big baddie there. Mm-hmm. So uh, I am interested to see how it goes from that point. Yeah, My Hero Academia is kind of an odd one because it's one of the relatively few ones where. I'm considerably more familiar with the manga than I am with the anime. Even though it's a very popular anime, I don't think I've seen any of it yet. But one day, I love the manga, and and the show is very colorful, and it looks like it would be a lot of fun. So I definitely am wanting to get it one of these days. (laughs) I used to even run a game based off of it. Yes. Uh, which I, which now do I, another? <laughs> when, I, when I get to stop working Friday night, 6 to midnight. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Those were uh, our game nights, and now I'm working at the hospital 6 to midnight. Yeah, um, but too bad. Also, NIS America is sadly mm. no longer going to be releasing anime, which is a very sad thing. They put together some beautiful box sets. They've had some good series. Good memories. Moment of silence. But uh, I hope you put some taps in there too. <laughs> it is the. It is sad actually to see it the is. end. I'll probably get copyright. They did struck such on a taps, good so. shot. No, <laughs> I doubt they're. I, who would have a copyright on that? There are copyright strikes on Gershwin. That's 1920s. Yeah, well, uh, I think that doesn't that predate whatever. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> NIS, they did have some formatting issues when they first started out, but they, I have probably only ever once had one of their products glitch, and that was on a TV that simply couldn't handle, it couldn't handle, couldn't handle the power, handle. it couldn't handle the power, exactly, <laughs> um, it, it, exactly, but, <laughs> but NIS, they did some great series, they have awesome sets, they're it's just a shame you know they were expensive but they weren't out of the or like it wasn't uncalled for you know what i mean it was yeah you're trying to find a visual this is one of the ones that i will be watching soon because it's a priority but this is his version of genshkin second generation you don't have that version oh i have it i I just don't have it with me (laughs) but you can see when you open it up well they uh they got a PS <laughs> well GSG they call it but Genshin's <laughs> um thing they have these hardcover books with all their editions which are very cool and then you got the the sets and this is more of a uh, this is their second uh, generation if you will box set if you watch our pickup videos for the week I showed off the uh, Hanasako Iroha movie which shows the previous version. Um, There is a third version that you don't see very many because I think they only put out three of them. And those were their complete series boxes. They're like these but bigger. I have the one for Cardcaptor Sakura. They also did them for Toradora and Alola in the Sea. But I don't know if they ended up doing any others. They probably didn't. Uh, Cardcaptor, I think, was going to be a line of basically anime classics kind of things, but they ended up having to abandon that almost right away. But Cardcaptor was a great release. I'm thrilled that I have that one. And it was pricey, but it probably cost hardly any more than what he paid. Actually, (laughs) uh, well, oh, for my Cardcaptor. Yeah. The My Cardcaptor set is the uh, He got the old school. old uh, volumes. Mm-hmm. So, but eh, um, but it wasn't too bad. But it was, yeah. it's worth having. Yeah. Uh, also, news. Hmm? I have heard uh, two series that are actually coming out. Hmm? Uh, I hate keep going to anime, but this is what I've gotten news wise lately. Mm-hmm. Um, one, City Hunter is getting a really? new animated feature. That, hmm. that is uh, something I've been hearing on the grapevine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to see them tie it up. I mean, the manga actually had a good tie up at the end i'm not going to ruin it for those of you but uh city hunter is interesting and they did end it on a kind of cool note i would love to see them just tie up the story that would Mm -hmm. be great because 
I have my great out of print series, but it kind of just ends like show of the day. Just your flavor of the day series. Um, also, on the 24th, they're starting a Kickstarter for a new Gunsmith Cats series. Hmm. Also, they are releasing... I can't remember the streaming channel. Like to but finance an actual new a production? New, a new series, yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, there is a small episode that's being released on a streaming site. I mm -hmm. can't remember which it is. Uh, and I think that's really what's kicking off the effort. They've already been asked if they would include that episode, but it's probably not. So it'll probably be lost. And just to you, you streamers who get to have it for yourselves mm. and then lose it because you can't own it. <laughs> but uh, at least you'll be able to look forward to that for those of you who like older series uh, I've actually got an example of the manga I've got an example of the actual series that was released, it wasn't much but I've actually got the complete manga for this uh, series I better be careful because there's a lot of nudity in it um, <laughs> a lot of nudity and violence but it is a good series they had a, a spin-off you know, series uh called Riding Bean. And while you're over there, grab your skip beat, or we can put it up here. R write stuff posted skip yeah. beat for purchase this week. I'll let you if you, if you, I don't feel like grabbing it. Yeah. <laughs> if you are, this is a great show. We've talked about it a lot on this channel. But they, we were part of the Kickstarter of, to bring it to this country. It was successful enough that now Write Stuff will actually have Basic Blu-ray editions for sale, which is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. It's going to be available. I think mm -hmm. uh, the company Pied Piper did the same thing, basically, yeah. with uh, the, uh, what was it, Time of Eve, the one that came before. Yeah. Um, I think that's their general model. It looks okay. like it is. But it's really cool to see they were able to follow through with it on this one. So, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. how they do with the Aria. They got some, yeah. Aria has some good voice actors. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they've done for the dub. Mm -hmm. I just spent too much money on the uh, on the yeah. version I have to get it again. Mm -hmm. um, like if I had gotten Skip Beat on another version, mm -hmm. I probably would have just not gotten the dub. Mm -hmm. But uh, especially if it was special edition versions, like of my mm -hmm. Aria sets. Mm -hmm. um, what what have you, have you heard of anything else in the media news? Uh, any uh, any hints or rumors or fun things? Hmm. Uh, I don't know um, if this qualifies as major news, but they have posted a full trailer for Avengers Infinity War. I watched that the other day. It looks pretty cool. Oh, people are <laughs> yeah. talking about it. Oh, I yeah. still need to finish Thor. Yes, but once you I do. Have, <laughs> once I finish Thor, I'll have been caught up unless, unless Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is majorly involved. But Not I don't likely. think it's been majorly involved with the series since uh, the Captain America one. No, they kind of um, wrote it out of the main, yeah. And I haven't, I haven't watched that. That one bored me, which is why uh, I haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched any of the Netflix series, which I'm sad to say. I really mm -hmm. want to watch Daredevil, and I really want to watch Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. I really don't have any desire to watch uh, Iron Fist or Defenders, but I am curious about Luke Cage. As I've well. seen none of Defenders or Luke Cage couple episodes of Daredevil, bits and yeah. pieces of Jessica Jones, bits and pieces of Iron Fist. Yeah, I was not blown away by Iron Fist, but the rest of it was good. Um, some of it was really good. Um, but yeah, definitely worth a look. Um, but yeah, definitely this year, Infinity War is going to be one of the big movies this year. Whether or not you are a superhero person, this yeah. thing is huge. They've got... They've confirmed something like 70 individual characters from previous franchises coming together in this one. That's pretty much unheard of in movies. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty big, pretty major. And uh, not to mention that just the series that have led up to it have been pretty awesome for the most part. Um, and Infinity War is based on a pretty major Marvel yeah. uh, storyline, so they've re they've reconned it, obviously retconned it quite a bit. But it's that's going to be yeah. Back when I collected uh, and I mean, anime, back when I collected comics, I actually did get the trade for that uh, particular storyline. Mm -hmm. 
And they say, like, you know, there's going to be a major death. Well, t my answer was, well, yeah, half of all life. If you've yes. read the comics, you know, yes. he goes in there to please death. Yeah. And uh, this is not spoilers, because for all I know, they could he they could be uh, romancing a horse in well, the movie. They uh, have <laughs> they, This is in the trailer, and I've heard commentary. He's not wooing death in this one. In this uh, one, basically, he believes... That the un it's, it's the sort of the universe is diseased and needs to be healed, so I'm going to kill half of it to make it happen. Yeah. That sort of thing. In the comics, you just yeah. and they're all and half of everybody's yeah. gone. Mary Jane disappears, which is why yeah. Spider Man got involved. Yeah. Which I don't know how Spider Man could actually you know, or, or Captain America because there's then the trailer you got this confrontation between Captain America and Thanos. Because, you know, Captain America could beat the crap out of Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, obviously. Obviously. And they're, they're talking about a major death. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know who, who who's your money on in this particular one. I guess it depends on how you define major. Because as far as deaths, we're pretty much certain that the Collector's going to snuff it. Vision is almost a given. Yeah. But, as but he far, can get better. He might be able to get better. That's the I mean, unknown the there. The comic version doesn't have a gem. Exactly. But they did that differently in the first yeah. place. So Vision is a question mark. He will die. But it may be a comic book death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as the others go, uh, it just seems very likely that this is the place for Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, to finally right retire. One. And maybe they um, could bring in uh, the, uh, because in the hmm. comics, uh, they got the uh, this black uh, female playing Iron hmm. Man. Uh, I can't remember her name. It's Riri something. Something like And uh, this would be a good opportunity to add some additional diversity to yeah. the Avengers and to the film. You could have... Uh, a young, strong black actress mm -hmm. uh, stepping into the role mm -hmm. of Iron Man, which is kind of weird that they still call it, they call the character Iron Man. But uh, yeah. you know, it's well, Jane Foster is known as Thor when she has the hammer. Yeah, I mean, they could kill <laughs> off Thor and actually replace her with the uh, with the current. Well, I, mean, I don't think she's the current one now, but with the female incarnation. Uh, I've heard rumor the Cap might also take it. There are a lot of people yeah. ready to get out. Yeah. I mean, Hawkeye would be an ideal one to get just... Yeah, that might actually just do that. It's like, half hand, you know, okay, Hawkeye's out. He never gets back. <laughs> I mean, he, you don't even see him in the trailer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's the major. Uh, that's yeah. the major thing that everyone's talking mm -hmm. about. Um of course, not the only Marvel production. Black Panther is still killing it in theaters. Oh, yeah. And at the end of summer, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out. So that's going to be pretty cool. I mean, it's yeah. already, uh, I think Tomb Raider's out. And it's already still yeah. beating Tomb Raider, which it, it is, makes sense. It is a great movie. Mm. I'm glad I got to see mm. it. Uh, I don't know about Tomb Raider. Um, oh, with Alicia Vikander, we have hope. But, you know. I, I enjoy, I'm one of those people who actually enjoyed. It was a guilty yeah. pleasure, but I enjoyed the other two films. Oh, yeah. I thought Angelina Jolie actually did a good Laura Croft. Oh, yeah. uh, she had a terrible accent, but that's all right. I don't expect the character, to, that over the top of the character, to be done in anything but over the top. Yeah. Uh, and now we've got a darker Tomb Raider for the games, so you can play this darker, slightly, uh, slightly flatter version not flat, but uh, not a <laughs> version like in the original games. Um, that would be an interesting choice, though. Do like one of the flat affect characters, like a Ray Ayanami or something, <laughs> as Laura Croft. Well, that would be kind of hmm. not flat and nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though. That would be an interesting <laughs> take on it. Um, actually. Yes, you could take Ami Sonohara from Dorada and put her in the Laura Croft role. And that would be... <laughs> that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Anyway, but, that's kind uh, of... That's yeah. most of it. To me, I think there's way too many of these. Uh, I, I really hate to say it, but I feel like I'm getting overload with, uh, with superhero what? movies lately. <sighs> I mean, they know it's going to sell, and so it's just constantly series, 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 series. I was able to keep up with it a yeah. lot at first. And now it's just there's too much. Yeah. My feeling is, as long as they're good, I don't give a damn how many of them are out there. But a lot of them aren't. 
Yeah. <laughs> or aren't as good. Marvel so far has not had a major dud. They've had a couple mild missteps, but they've had, you know, good success. They know what people want and they know how to do good movies. Yeah. And they know how to do good movies that pay homage to the characters but tweak them to make them work in a cinematic setting. Not all the tweaks have been necessary, but it's been nothing compared to what Fox has felt the need to do or Uh, what DC has felt the need to do. You know, it's like, I mean, mean, I've been hearing rumors that DC originally wanted Nathan Fillion for Aquaman. He would have been so much better than Jason Momoa. So much better. Don't know, haven't seen it. um, (laughs) Yeah, well, you'll find out. You've seen the previews. Yeah. But you'll find out. He looks interesting. I mean, he does a good job, but so he's like I, he's like the bro for soccer. Well, they man. wanted they wanted the they wanted their version of Thor. Yeah, and he's pretty much their version of Thor uh, <laughs> for this particular continuity, not from the comics. <laughs> Just that uh, concept. <laughs> but uh, I mean, people are so like ears like you should release the Snyder cut. It's like why. There was this reflection. Some people actually got to see the Snyder Cut and said, oh, it's so much darker and depress- more depressing. It's like, yes, it's the Snyder Cut. <laughs> what, do you expect to be happy-go-lucky? It's going to have no jokes. It's going to have lots of slow motion. Uh, maybe some filtered light uh, effects. Uh, it's going to be very, like, sepia-toned. And I uh, don't expect much I don't out of know characterization. About sepia, more like black, almost and gray. like black and gray. <laughs> and it's going to be like uh, the characterization is going to be kind of crap. And um, that's pretty much how you do a Zack Snyder film. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really don't think that it would have improved it. Uh, mm. But uh, from what I've heard, it well, it wasn't uh, a lot to go with. Mm. I do hope that they do continue long enough to get to Dark Side. I mean, they are doing a New Gods series or movie or something mm-hmm. which is going to have Dark Side. Mm-hmm. I'm not that familiar with that stuff. I like the mm-hmm. DC the DC animated universe well. Yeah. The CW is doing excellent with their stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh Black Lightning uh is actually doing well. Um you know, one of the things that I wish that they would do is just say heck with what they've got. They were thinking about getting rid of Batman anyway, uh, Batflick anyway. They could just drop all that they've got so far. Say you know what? We're gonna tie all of our movies in to the CW, and because it's a successful, it's a yeah. successful thing. They could do that yeah. and have a very successful uh, franchise. So basically, reboot the DCEU, but reboot it with the same cast and crew of the of the shows, basically? Yeah, and keep it in that yeah. continuity. That or, would be a good plan. I or, mean, you know, you could do ones that aren't in the shows, yeah. and then uh, you could have them... Well, it would also make... Cameos. One thing they've been hamstrung in the, uh, in the TV, in the Arrowverse, they've been hamstrung... By an inability to use big name characters yeah. in the shows, if they did that, then they could make everybody happy, and it would be a way where you could theoretically, if they got something right the first time, yeah, they could still do it and not like for example, you know, let's say Ben Affleck was a good Batman, he really mm-hmm. was. Let's say he's like, I'm done with these movies. Yeah, They're just easy. not doing it for me anymore. But, you know what? I'll give you ten minutes on TV show. Yeah. You know, he might be willing to do that. Who knows? Um, or some of the people, like, some of the ones they have really gotten, that they really did good. Gal Gadot is a great Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. Viola Davis is freaking awesome as Amanda Waller. They If she, they could bring her into the Arrowverse, that yeah. would be great. You and know, she has you know. been known to do TV. I mean, yeah. how to get away with murder. Exactly. And um, even Margot Robbie's take on Harley Quinn, I don't mind at all. I wouldn't mind seeing them redo Harley closer to my favorite versions of the character. <laughs> but Margot Robbie definitely got the spirit of the character down. They could do away with Jared Leto's Joker and redo that. <laughs> 
please. Uh, and I still say The Rock would be a great Killer Croc. <laughs> well, the Joker, the the Joker in the standalone Joker origin film is going yeah. to be played by a different actor. Yeah. So that might the, be the beginning of the end of that. Um, I don't know anything about the Batman standalone film coming up, or the Aquaman standalone film. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone does at this point. And of course, Flash, they're doing a Flash movie with Flashpoint. Yeah. But again... Of course, with Flash, you can't bring in the movie version because the TV version is already awesome. But yeah. maybe they could bring him in as an alternate reality uh, Yeah, I mean, there's Flash plenty of or, those. The, oh, yeah, there's so many. Or maybe he could come in as like a young young Jay Garrick or something like that, yeah. you know? I, I think that... I it, know, I think Garrick's already been in the series. So, Warner Brothers, if yeah, you're whatever. listening... Drop the gritty. Even Arrow kind of dropped the gritty, which some yeah. people say is kind of what has the series going on a down swing. Mm -hmm. But to me, most of the CW films, mm -hmm. or, I mean, films, shows are not gritty. They are kind of hopeful. They mm -hmm. have that feel that the DC mm -hmm. Comics had that dra that mm -hmm. brings those people to it. Or right. is that? Even when Gotham inevitably stumbles and falls... They could pull some of the better elements of that series in, yeah. you know, um, if they really wanted to. That might confuse some viewers, but some of those characters are so well cast. The dude playing Zaz is just great, you know. Yeah. And they're actually yeah. they could at this point because the characters are starting to get old enough. Yeah. In a few years, they could have those characters come in yeah. as an actual Batman, Joker, and, yeah. and so on. I mean, shoot, they have an excellent Joker character in there. He does a great mm -hmm. job with that. You could you could take the idea of the proto-Joker and throw it to the wind and just say, this yeah. dude is the Joker. And in a different continuity, it would make sense. I mean, the whole thing yeah. with the uh, where they took his face and uh, he stapled it back onto himself, that's yeah. actually in yeah. the comics in one of the alternate universes yeah. that the Joker does this. So... Yeah. It's going to, uh, to me, I think that there's a lot of things they could do to fix it. Will they do it? No. Are they <laughs> going to keep going dark dark and, and uh, like, dirty? Probably. Yeah. Are they going to keep failing? Probably. But uh, at least we can go back to the TV shows. <laughs> All right. So anything else before we wrap up on this? Uh, we've been mm. running at 45, so... Um, I, I think that's probably... I think there was anything else big going on this week. Nothing jumps to mind. Yeah, nothing um, else in the news that I'm hearing. Yeah. But, um... um you know, it's, oh, oh, I did see one thing. Uh, we've we've mentioned a few times on this one the whole, uh, you know, the whole Hollywood scandal that's still playing out, you know, the Me Too and all that oh, stuff. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Did you see the, uh, the Terry Gilliam threw his hat into the fray? Oh, what did he say? He is probably going to get a lot of hate mail. Oh. Did he for, defend somebody? Well, for one thing, he defended his bud, Matt Damon. Which, oh. you know... Well, Matt Damon's not known for actually doing anything. He's just yeah. known for, for, uh, for defending. Be, well, yeah, Damon and I... Or not saying anything, I should say. I'm probably going to get some hate mail here. I think Gilliam took it way too far. I, yeah. I like Gilliam, but he is known for speaking his mind, and that's one of the reasons his movies oftentimes fail he uh but damon and gilliam said the same thing everyone has always said damon has a reputation as the nice guy as a good guy i don't know him personally but from what i know he spoke an opinion and was excoriated for having an opinion and gilliam is probably going to take a little bit of that heat because his opinion was much harsher but I do think he had a salient point that sometimes some people it's getting almost to the point where you can't have an opinion unless it's the mainstream opinion. Well, that's when and the, that's when the dangerous. pendulum goes too far in yeah. any direction. Yeah. You go too far in one direction, yeah. you got crosses burning. Yeah. You go too far in the other selection, people are being hung for things they're not they haven't yeah. done because they said the wrong thing. Yeah. It's uh you, you're not um you're not doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, from my point, I think that some of these people deserve to be exposed for the things they yeah. were doing. Some of these people really, it's nice to see a sea change where 
it could be a more level playing field and more open and more oh, yeah. inviting. But well, as people, far as I'm concerned, Weinstein can go to hell. I mean, I'm sorry, he at was, this point, he was yeah. an ass. But <laughs> I just I've not seen any evidence yeah. to my mind that means we should uh, kick Matt Damon out of public yeah. spotlight. And there's people, you know, that you know, even even as harsh as his point was. Gilliam did make a good point that people are already going too far. He's going to probably have even much more difficulty making yeah. his next movie. Well, but you, you yes. cheapen, you cheapen yes. it by uh, going too yeah. far. Um, but, um, I mean, uh, speaking of Monty Python, actually, yeah. um, John Cleese was in the news. Yes, I saw um, them actually the same day. And, I saw uh, it. And he's actually, uh, by the way, uh, performing in Charlottesville. Really? Uh, oh, yep. I knew about and, uh, that. When is this? Be, I can't remember when. It's going to be at the end, either sometime oh, in April. I'm... But it's a hundred dollars a seat, and I'm uh, not sure I want to spend that much. I want so bad. I want that's to see a it. lot. That's a lot of money. But, but uh, and how much longer is he going to be touring? Yeah, he's getting there, and a lot oh. of them, unfortunately, you know, they're not going to be with us that much oh. longer. I think Eric Idle was it Eric Idle the one that has Alzheimer's. Uh, I think that's Terry Jones. Terry Jones. One of them is yeah. one of them is no longer with us. That was well. Graham Chapman died, died years yeah. ago, and uh, I think all Terry of them are Jones still alive, died. but uh, except yeah. for Graham. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, yeah. one of them has Alzheimer's. Um, but uh, I saw the way you know Cleese was doing. I mean, he, he had actually did an article where he was discussing how he deals with Trump supporters who get mad and walk <laughs> out. He's just like. He says, a round of applause <laughs> as they leave. Yes. Uh, his, his comment was, he doesn't see Trump supporters as fans of Monty Python. I disagree because I know some Trump supporters who are fans of Monty Python, but uh, you've got to understand some of these people, they have those views that are not lined up with that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go too much more political, but I thought that was entertaining. Yeah, like, this is how you deal with the people, and it's one of the reasons I want to go, especially in Charlottesville. I mean, just like with my whole like Bill Maher and uh, you know yes. Cannibal Women yes. and the Avocado Jungle of Death. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm surprised they didn't get a Python for a movie like that, honestly. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just a... I, I like that. That is just great. Uh, All right. Well, so, so, with that being said, um, if you like this new format, give us a comment. Of course, like our videos, mm -hmm. share, subscribe, mm -hmm. and we will see you on the next one.